All right, so dive right to it. What's your name, your age, your date of paralysis, and your level of injury? Um, okay, my name is Dante Slavio. Okay. I'm 24 years old. Um, I have a T9 spinal cord injury, mm-hmm. and um, I was paralyzed on March 30th. Okay. 2018. Now, before we get into what actually happened... You can go ahead and tell us about like how that day was going. Were you having a good day, a bad day? Did you feel like something was going to happen? How was your day going? Uh, that day was actually going great for me, man. I was mm. uh, spending time with uh, some good friends and uh, yeah. my younger uh, sibling. And uh, we were just out, you know, just having a good time. We was actually about to go to um, the beach and uh, walk around on the sand. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, while everyone was, you know, getting ready and stuff like that to go to yeah. the beach, uh, I was outside waiting for him in the car. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's when it got to that point. Okay. Now, what time of day is this? Uh, this was maybe about like at 11 at, no, 11 at night. So y'all about to go to the beach, you sitting in the car. Are you sitting in his car or are you sitting in your car? So this is pretty much a targeted attack then. Yeah. Take us to right before everything happened. Uh, okay, so right before everything happened, um, mm-hmm. I think I was outside alone in the car. Yeah. Um, I think I was in my trunk uh, grabbing a sweater, making sure, you know, I had extra sweats and mm-hmm. stuff. Um, and then I remember going to the driver's side of my door um, and I hear a gate open, but it was a loud bang when the gate opened. Yeah. So, so I walked around my car to see what was going on. What was that noise? Mm-hmm. And then that's when I saw a dude uh, standing there in front of the driveway, um, holding holding the gun. Mm. Okay. So at this time, you out the car. This time I'm out the car. Okay. So, so that loud bang, do you think that loud bang was, was a gunshot or like, what do you think that loud bang was? That loud bang was from him uh, slamming the gate closed. Whose backyard is he coming out of? I think I'm pretty sure he was coming out of This call is being recorded. He was coming out of his yard. Oh, okay. So this was somebody that lives, that lives next to you or live close to you. Just somebody that you know. Yeah, this was actually, this was someone that lives uh, nearby. Yeah, and, uh, it was someone that I actually knew. I was actually trying. I was friends mm-hmm. with this person. Since you said that you were friends with this person, was there like some type of falling out, uh, argument? You know, was there anything that that happened prior that led up to this? Um, we actually had a good friend friend uh, relationship. Yeah, uh, he was a good person, uh, but then he started mm-hmm. having. Um, some some problems within uh, his household, within his family, and stuff like that. And okay. I tried to be there for him, uh, yeah. but he went down a different path. Mm-hmm. And I would I would try to give him help, and you know his sisters and mom would try to give him help, but you know he would just get angry. He didn't want help from anybody, so mm-hmm. I told him, you know what, you know I'm gonna just keep my distance from you. Yeah. And you know I started <clears throat> being around, you know, a different crowd or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me, you know, coming around and not speaking to him, you know, it just would, you know, trigger him to, like, have some type of hatred towards me yeah. or whatever. Mm. So, you know, okay. but, but before that, we was really good friends. Do you think when he came out the gate, do you think he was already intending to shoot you? Or do you think that he just saw you and he put out the gun? Do you think that this was something that was planned prior? I think he actually planned to come out and uh, do that. Mm-hmm. But I know he planned to come outside with his weapon because, you know, he came outside with it. Mm. Um, once he saw that I was uh, parked outside waiting for okay. a few other friends. Take us to that moment where you and him you and him lock eyes. What's that like? Um, once I heard the loud bang, yeah. I looked up, and it's him, and he's standing right 
sitting there with his hoodie on and stuff like that. He, he looks at me, he say, he say, what's up? And I say, what's up? You good? And uh, he said, yeah, uh, you can't be right here. Mm. Uh, I was parked in front of his house, but okay. on, the other side of the, uh, on the other side of the sidewalk. Mm. So he said, you can't be right here. And I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not bothering nobody. I'm, you know, I'm waiting for some plans to come out. Yeah. We, you know, we about to leave or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, I don't care. You can't, you can't be parked right here. Mm-hmm. And from that point, I looked at him. I, I just smiled. And I, and I ignored him. And I kept, uh, uh, you know, cleaning out my car and grabbing, you know, bags and stuff to take. Mm-hmm. So um, I hear him uh, walking up behind me. Like, I hear footsteps. So I, I get from out of the car again. I'm like, what's up, bro? You good? And I could see that he was off some type of drugs or whatever, you know, because mm-hmm. he was crying in his teeth, his eyes was real big and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, what's up? You good? And he like, like I said, you can't be right here. Mm. And I told him, I'm like, I'm not going nowhere. And then from there, you know, it was just... It just escalated? You know, uh, uh, yeah, it got it escalated. And at this time, when it escalated, I didn't see a weapon or nothing like that. Okay. Whatever he put from... So it was just a heated, you know, word yeah. exchange or whatever. Okay. So I kind of brushed him off, like, man, you know what, you know, get, you know, get by my face, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I brushed him off, and that made him more mad because I brushed him off, went back to the car, you know, I closed the door <clears> on him, and just, you know, left <clears> him right there. Yeah. So from there, you know, that's when he got he got mad. Mm. Okay. Okay. So at this point, you in the car. You lock the door. What is he saying outside the car? Is he saying anything? Is he screaming? Uh, Has he pulled the gun yeah, out? He just, yeah, he's just screaming. He didn't pull it out. Yeah, he's just screaming. Okay. He's like, oh, he's like, oh, F you, you know, you know, cussing me out. Yeah. And stuff like that. So I'm telling him to get away from my car. Because if I get out the car, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to move him away from my car. Mm-hmm. You know, at the window and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so he was like, nah, you the one got to leave. I'm not going nowhere. So at this point, I'm texting, uh, this call is being recorded. Friends, and now I'm telling them, you know, to come outside the house and stuff so we can go yeah. before it escalate. So by then, he still didn't go away. So I got out the car again. And I got in front of him, like, bro, you need to bag up. Mm-hmm. And he pulled out his weapon. He put out his weapon and like, you know, what you mean I got a bag up? Uh, you all up on my car. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, like that, bro? That's how you doing it? Like, you know, you got a weapon? What's that for? Yeah. And he like, he like, you gonna see. And from there, you know, I just stood there and I looked at him like, man, you tripping right now. No, you tripping. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm supposed to be your boy. You tripping. Yeah. And he was like, you out of it. He, he didn't want to hear nothing. So the moment right before the shooting happened, what's going on? So right before the shooting happened, I'm just looking at him like, so, you know, that's how it is. Like, you know, we we supposed to be boys, but, you know, look what you're doing. You know, I would never put out nothing like that on you. Yeah. And he's just like, man, I'm not going to fight you. You're too big. You're too big. I'm not going to mm-hmm. fight you. And I'm like, well, we don't, it don't even have to be a fight, but you take mm-hmm. me to a level that it, it's somewhere it don't need to go. Mm-hmm. So from there, I'm just, I'm talking to him, but I'm looking at his hands. Okay. So, you know, to keep my eyes on, on, the, on yeah. his weapon, because right now I'm aware that he got something. Okay. So, I'm just, I'm just looking at him, and he walks off, actually. He said, you know what? He walks off and tells me, I'm not going to fight you. You're too big. So from there, I just stayed quiet. I didn't know what to say after that. He just walked off and Damn. went back to the sidewalk. So I went back to my car. Yeah. So from there, you know, my heart was kind of pounding a little bit. I'm like, ooh, you know, that was yeah. scary right there. I guess it's over with now. Hell yeah. So I went and closed my trunk. And when I turned around, he was standing right there with the um, gun pointed at mm. me. And right then and there... I just, you know, I froze up. Yeah. And, you know, I started, I started thinking about, you know, I, have a, I had a one-year-old daughter at that time. I started thinking, mm-hmm. like, you know, about my daughter and stuff. Yeah. And um, from there, 
Chills is like, you know, I'm going to shoot you. You know, you're too big, you know. I'm like, bro, nobody's talking about fighting you. I'm telling you to get away from my car. Mm-hmm. And he just, pulled, he, just, he just pulled the trigger and shot me in the shoulder. Okay, so he shot you one time in the shoulder? Yeah, he shot me one time in the shoulder and uh, one time in the rear. Damn. From hey. like, uh, and he was maybe about like a feet away from me, not, not even that. Do you know what caliber bullet it was? Uh, I think he had like a thirty eight special. Okay. Okay, so so uh, so do you know do you know which one? Was the bullet that actually paralyzed you? Was it the one that went into the ribs or the one that went to the shoulder? I think it was the one that they said it was the one that went into my shoulder. Um, oh. My left shoulder and then traveled. Um, they said it didn't hit my spine. It didn't hit my spine. I think it just hit a nerve and it kind of like damaged the nerve. Mm. Okay, so are you a complete injury or are you incomplete? I'm incomplete. Okay, so you still get spasms and everything, right? Yeah, I still get real bad spasms. Mm. How do the spasms feel? Because I don't get spasms, so I really don't... I honestly don't know. It's weird. Cause I don't feel like the outside of my legs. Yeah. It's numb. Like, you don't have to rub my legs, and it's real numb. You yeah. Know, I feel it. But, say I hit my knee right now, like I'll knock off my knee. Yeah. I feel... The, the tingling, it's like a tingling feeling. Mm-hmm. Inside, I feel my muscles in the inside. Like when you hit your elbow, and you hit yeah. your funny bone. That's that's what I feel when I get spasms. Oh, oh shit! And your legs, all right? Yeah, my legs mm. are. If I get in the shower and I turn the hot water on, the water too hot, I won't feel it on the outside of my legs, but inside it'll start like yeah. You know, hurting. Okay, so the moment that he shoots you, do you just fall? Yeah, the moment he shoots me, uh, I fall. Well, he he, he kind of like let off both shots, like back to back. So it was like boom, boom. And the first one, I was going down already. But the second one hit me before I hit the floor. Mm. So from there, I hit the floor. And at that moment, my... Uh, my friends and stuff, they heard the shot, so they ran outside um, to see what happened. Yeah. This call is being recorded. They saw me on the floor, mm-hmm. and they're like, what happened? What happened? And that's when the guy that shot me, uh, my ex-friend, he grabbed me by the shoulders while I was on the floor, and he said, he just dropped the gun on top of me. He was like, I'm sorry for what I did. I don't know what I just did right now. And I just looked down, I'm like, you know, he's... I'm like, let me go, because I'm at that point. I'm like, bro, I don't trust you right now, and I'm shot, you know, I'm in pain. Mm-hmm. So he said, I'm sorry for what I did. I don't know that's then He took off running, and then uh, um, my friends stuff. They grabbed me, and uh, they was telling me to lay there. They was like, lay here, you know, and we'll call paramedic stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm getting short of the breath. I can't breathe. Y'all need to put me in the car and drive me to the hospital. I can't, I can't sit right here. The area we stay in is like it's a city called Watts. In, okay. Uh, Watts, California. But it's like, it's like five minutes away from Compton. Okay. I'm like, man, you know, I know how to pair messages around here. If, it, if it's not for the police, then they ain't going to come take like an hour or 40 minutes to get here. I said, we don't have that much time. We got to yeah. come here. So we can put me in the car. And uh, my friend, they drove me straight to the hospital. Um, Are you bleeding everywhere, or? Yeah, I'm, I'm bleeding everywhere. You know, they put they put me in the back seat. I'm, just, you know, I'm bleeding. Uh, uh, one of my best friends, uh, she, she uh, was just mm. keeping me calm. She called my mother. And yeah. My daughter on the phone and was just letting me talk to them mm. on the way to the hospital. Okay. So you said you was gasping for air. Was your lung hit at all? Uh, or or is this just from the ribs? Cause I know it's hard to breathe whenever your ribs get like broken or something like that. Yeah, no, it was just it was just I think just from the the bullet wound, you know, just from mm, the bullet wound, okay. the bullet being inside like my body, yeah, being cold and hot, and it was hard for me to, you know, it was just like hard for me to breathe for some reason. What type of pain was you in? Like, how was that pain feeling? Was it just a pain from 
from the gunshot wound or was you having pain in your legs? What was it like? The pain, the pain was from like really from like the from the from the gunshot wound. Mm. The impact of it was really the pain of it. Uh, the impact, it, it was kind of like I can just feel like it was it was like hard. Like it, when, yeah. when the bullet hit me. It made my whole body like rock and go into shock, and it was, mm. just, it was painful from there. Yeah, and when your friends helped you up off the ground, was you able to move your legs at that moment or no? No, once once the bullet hit me, the first moment it hit me, I fell to the ground and I tried to get back up. I tried to move, but that's when I realized I was just screaming. I'm like, damn, I can't get up. My legs, I can't feel my legs. <sighs> I couldn't stand up. Yeah. I was able to move my hands and everything, but I just couldn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, so your friends pick you up, they put you in the car. Now y'all on your way to the hospital. How long was that ride? Uh, it was about uh, five, ten minutes to the hospital. Five, ten uh, minutes? Martin Luther King Hospital. Okay. Now, now, did anybody call the hospital and let them know, or, or whenever they get there, they just rush you in? Uh, no, it was actually a... Like the first instinct was just we got in the car and it was just uh, man I ain't gonna lie it was just like running red lights and everything trying to get me there yeah they kind of like drove the car all the way to the emergency door emergency door to the hospital mm-hmm. and uh, I remember they opened the back door and the uh, security guard from the hospital was sitting right there at the desk like he was like oh my god he was like oh somebody get this man some help and from there. You know, I just know they uh, put me on a journey, and I blacked out from there. Damn. Okay, so so when you black out, how long is it until you wake up again? About uh, three days later. Th- okay, so I'm guessing they put you in, indu- in induce a coma for those three days? Yeah, like I was in the ICU one day. Okay. Um, once the medication and all that stuff wore off, and then, mm-hmm. you know, it was about like two, three days later when I woke up. Yeah. Okay, so when you wake up, when you in the hospital and you finally wake up, what's that moment like? Who's there? Uh, when I wake up, uh, mm-hmm. I see my mom, my sister. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, both, both of my uh, little brothers, they was there. And uh, they was, you know, all around me telling me, you know, I'm all right, I'm going to be okay, yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. Now, at that moment, do you already realize that you're paralyzed, or? Recorded. At that moment, do you already realize that you're paralyzed, or? What's being said at that moment? At that moment, I didn't realize I was uh, paralyzed. Yeah. I woke up, and I'm like, what happened? I think I remember getting shot. I I said that out loud. Um, And my mom started crying. She was like, yeah, you gonna be okay? Yeah. And, um. I still didn't realize at that time, you know, I'm just laying yeah. back in the bed, and that's when the the, uh, the head surgeon, he walked in the, in the room, and was like, hey, Mr. Mr. Spondale, you know, I want to talk to you. He asked, was it okay for family members to be inside the room? I said, yeah, of course. And that's when he broke down all the information, and was like, well, it's no easy way of saying this, but you know you were shot at this time. Um, mm. Told me what the bullet damage, and uh, told me you know, unfortunately you a T nine uh, injury, which you know mm. you're paralyzed from waist down. And yeah. when he said that, I said paralyzed. He was like, you know, he said, he said yeah. I tried to get up out the bed, and I was like, man, you, you got to be kidding, bro. I tried to get out the bed, and I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't mm. move. So at that moment. You know, I just broke down in tears. Like, you know, I didn't yeah. know what to do. I kind of, like, tell everybody to get out the room and stuff like that. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, it's definitely understandable. Okay. So, you get to the hospital. You went in a coma for three days. You wake up. They tell you that you're paralyzed. What's, what's the next step from there? Uh, from there, it's just, uh, it was hard because 
and I was still trying to mm. take it all in. Yeah. So I was really just, you know, just there, yeah, just, you know, taking my medication and, and hoping, like, okay, when I go to sleep and wake up, yeah. you know, everything will be different. You know, maybe I'll just have a gunshot wound, but my legs will work. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, that didn't happen. Every day it was just, I was still the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that's when the doctor was like, hey, you gotta, you know, you gotta move. And yeah. You can't just lay in one spot, you have to turn. Um, I had a tube in my, in my chest to drain out all the blood. Mm-hmm. So it was like once I got all the, once they took that out and took me off the breathing machine, Yeah. they started trying to, you know, work with me to, you know, teaching me how to sit up again. Yeah. And how to transfer from out the bed to a wheelchair. Yeah. And, and all the basics of, you know, to get me stronger mm-hmm. when they, you know, release me. Yeah, nah, I, I definitely can relate because I know how I felt, you know, just them teaching me how to sit up again. To me, I feel like that in the hospital, that was probably my biggest task was, was sitting up again because I would sit up or try to sit up. And, you know, like I told people before, I'd be pouring sweat. The only thing I felt like helped me out was my mom brought me this little baby fan. Right, and then you know, like since I had lost my lung, this call is being recorded. Since I had lost my lung, I was I pretty much had to learn how to breathe all over again. And I'm yeah. telling you, man, whenever I would sit up, I would feel so winded that that little fan was the only thing that really helped me out and really kind of just gave me the confidence to really just keep going, man. Because I was so winded just from sitting up in the bed, like. <laughs> Like, it's crazy. So, so they they start finally teaching you how to sit up in the bed and everything. How long is it from the time you get up to the time that they first put you in a wheelchair? Ooh, um, I would say it was about two weeks later. Two weeks later, I thought I wake up. I uh, first set up in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, the first week I was dealing with uh, just. transfer board yeah and they like you know we're gonna try to teach you how to sit on this put it under you sit on it and um transfer from the, the, the uh, wooden board mm-hmm. to the wheelchair and that was pretty hard for me to do because yeah. like, every time i was school i will rock forward go backwards so they had to hold me with a little belt yeah um until i got the hang of it okay so, Okay, so they finally get you in a chair. Do you start physical therapy and and the occupational therapy at the same time? Uh, yeah, but once this was on at um, one hospital, uh, St. Francis. Okay. Um, in Linwood, so I was there. Once they started, I was able to sit up in a the chair. They automatically transferred me to the Long Beach Memorial because they have physical therapy and occupational therapy inside mm. the hospital. So they transferred okay. me there. And from, from there, uh, I would do, you know, every morning around 10 in the morning, uh, I will go to the to the therapy room and yep. do physical and occupational therapy, uh, learning how to, they'll put me on a big bed. Mm. Teach me how to um how to transfer from the chair to the bed. Yeah. Roll over on my side, roll over on my back and stomach. Uh, they will teach me how to uh. Well, they put me on a bike, a, a pedal bike. Mm-hmm. Like a hand cycle. Uh, teach me, yeah, yeah, hand cycle. Okay. Yeah, they put me on that and stuff like that. So it was like we was doing a lot of. Okay. Just stuff to build my strength back up. Mhm. Okay. Okay. How long was it that you was in that you was in therapy for uh, until you got out? Uh, out the hospital, right? Um, 
Um, yeah. Maybe about two months after that. I okay. Was in about two months. Okay. Yeah, I was up in there for about I would say two and a half to three months. This call is being recorded. You get out the hospital. What's that feeling like? Are you happy, excited? Um, you know, down. How are you feeling at that moment? Uh, um, I'm feeling good to actually leave the hospital and go home. Yeah, I, I, I was too. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, hey, you know, it, it feels different. You get to breathe some fresh air. Mm-hmm. And just, you know, be out and about, you know what I'm saying, with, yeah. with my family again. Yep. I didn't have to deal with those needles and getting shots every day and mm-hmm. like me drawing blood. So it kind of like, it was a big relief for me. Yeah, but that's understandable. At the same time, I was like, yo, dang, I'm still dealing with, man, I don't have my legs, you know? Yep. How am I about to, you know, live my life like this out here without nurses, mm-hmm. you, know, uh, you know, helping me out or babying me and stuff? Mm-hmm. Nah, I feel you, I feel you. Okay, so... So when you leave the hospital, do you go to your house, your mom's house, your girl's house? Where do you go from there? Um, I go to my mom's house. Okay. Before I got out, actually, they set up my, um, I had a, a, my own room at my mom's house. Mm. They, the, um, what is it, the, the counselor at the hospital, she went out to the house and, um. Uh, Assessed it. She set up, yeah, she, she, she. she I went and checked it out, and she they yeah. took out my normal bed. They put like a, a hospital bed inside the room. Mm-hmm. They put the little little button to press when I need help or need my mom to come in the room. Okay. Uh, stuff like that. So they, you know, they they kind of assessed the room for you know me being in a wheelchair. Okay. So when I got out, I went there to my mom's house. Okay. Okay. Now, do you feel like do you feel like them doing them doing that helped you out tremendously or do you feel like that that there was more that they could have did or you know how'd you feel about that um i feel like you know they did the best thing they can do they kind of yeah. helped me out with you know a lot of stuff or whatever yeah that they was able to help me with that helped out a lot actually in the long run yeah and uh on top of that they um you know, I have a good family support, so it's mm-hmm. like my mom and uh, my mother's mom, my baby mom, she, they was there throughout the whole, you know, step of the way, and they yeah. kind of trained them to help me transfer in the car, mm-hmm. or just help me, you know, cap, help me cap into, yeah. get the hang of it myself, or, you know, help me use the restroom, stuff like that, so when I got home, yeah. they they uh, supplied me with everything that I will need and they will need, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. of course, it I was the same way. Easier. They did my family the same way, so yeah, that was def- yeah. that was definitely a big help, you know. Not only having that support system, but them kind of not really feeling what you're going through, but them able to kind of understand and help you out. I feel like that kind of yeah. eases the pain a little bit, you know, because you know they teach them things to help you out with your paralysis. You know, and these are things that you actually need help with, you know. So yeah. just to get that help from a family member versus, you know, a nurse, it means that much more. So yeah. I definitely it understand. Was, it, was actually, it, was, it was actually hard for them, you know. Yeah, it is. It yeah. Was a big change. It was a big change for, for, you know, the both of us, all of us. Exactly. And, you know, it, it was not easy, you know. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we, we got through it. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, you know, not only do you go through something, but your family goes through something as well. You know, exactly. When it comes to the guy that shot you, was he ever arrested for the incident? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, he was. Uh, he was actually arrested uh, four days later after he shot me. Um, his family, I, I believe, uh, his the detectives told me his family turned him in. Um, mm. His family turned him in. Yeah. He actually tried to reach out to me while he was in jail, and uh, he told me uh, he was sorry. And uh, when he, whenever he come out, he wanted to help me uh, with therapy and you know stuff like that. Yeah. You know, try to send me mail, you know, and bracelets and stuff he made for me there. Yeah. And, you know, I just so you know I didn't want to have no contact with him and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, if you could ask him one question, what would it be? I would, I would want to, I always wanted to ask him, like, if we was to go back to that day, mm-hmm. would he do anything different? Yeah. Like, you know, would, would it, do we think he would have, you know, did the same thing if we can go back or would he would have did anything different? Like, you know, I just want to know mm-hmm. if he regret doing what he did. Mm-hmm. Damn. Do you know how much time he got for shooting? Uh, I believe they gave him uh, 15 years with 85%. Okay. Uh, but since the, uh, the newest new d- district attorney inside the office, so there's no, they said it's no more 85%. It goes to 66%. Mm. So I'm pretty sure I had 15. He only does like, he would do like 13 before. But now okay. he's only... He only have to do maybe by like six or six or five. Mm-hmm. Do you feel like that he got enough time for shooting you, or do you feel like he should have got more time or less time? Um, I will say, you know, he said, I mean, he got what he deserved. Yeah. You know, because I look at it like, you know, I wouldn't wish uh, Joe on anybody. Yeah. So, you know, but I just look at it like, you know, I thank God that I'm still here and I'm still living. Exactly, know? exactly. God, God, God going to deal with him the best way, you know, he want to deal with him. Mm-hmm, exactly. You know? Exactly. I, look, I feel the same way. I'm just, no matter the circumstances, but man, I'm just blessed to be alive. I'm just, I'm, I'm happy to be here, you know, striving, you know, just out here trying to make it every day. Yeah. It, like it, 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 it doesn't matter to me. I'm, I'm just happy to be here, honestly. Yeah, you know, and kind of, you know, my family. They took my mind off a lot of stuff every day. I wouldn't want to come out the room. I wouldn't want to go out in public. Yep. You know, I feel awkward. I didn't want to go to the movies. But you know, my mom, my baby mom, she's they, they, they built a strength in me. Yeah. And, you know, helped me overcome that. They helped me start, you know, teaching me how to drive. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, just making me feel comfortable with, you know, going out in public. You know, because mm-hmm. after I got, when I got home, I was in the house for like eight months before I even wanted to come outside and be around people. Mm, damn, you know? look. And now, oh, I'm oh, sorry about that. Now, now to this day, you know, I feel good about going out. You know, I, yeah. I actually want to get to know the other people. Hey, let's go here. Yeah. You know, I'm, Pre planning stuff like, man, let's go get on some jet skis. Let's go get <laughs> some quads, you know. I, yeah, I can do all of that, you know. Hell yeah, so, you can. Hey, hey, look, I got on the jet ski. My boy done rode some quads. Look, my man, you could do all that still. It ain't over. Exactly. What do you feel has been the biggest obstacle that you face since you've been paralyzed? Um, I would say I face. Uh, Judgment, like, you know, judgment in myself. I face judgment. Mm. Like, I will I always think, you know, being in a wheelchair, yeah. oh, this person wouldn't want to be my friend because I'm in a wheelchair. Or mm-hmm. maybe this girl wouldn't want to talk to me because, you know, I'm in a wheelchair. You know, maybe yeah. she overlooked me, yeah. stuff like that. So, I, basically, my biggest obstacle was, like, you know, judgment within myself. Yeah. You know what? Honestly, I went through the same thing. I still kind of go through the same thing. You know, I, I really, yeah. you know, like like you said, you was in the house for eight months, man. I was in the house for like two years. I did go out. I did go out within those two years, man. But I was really, I really, I really did not leave the house, man. I, I didn't leave the bed. I, like, I didn't do anything. I wasn't doing anything. So trust me, I, trust me, I know that, I know that funk that you can get in. You know, once you get out of the hospital, not wanting to go out, not wanting people to see you, not wanting to go to places that you used to go to because, you know, you're scared that you might see somebody from high school or somebody that you know that hasn't seen you, exactly. you know. <laughs> so, it, man, that the chilling is, I mean, the feeling is definitely shitty, you know, and yeah. it, took, it took me a while to actually, it took me a while to actually get out of the house. So, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I was a big time football player. You know, everybody okay. knew me as oh, this dude, yeah, he can ball, he got skills, yeah. you know, stuff like this. 
and then boom, I get shot. So I was like, man, now they everybody want to see me in a wheelchair. And a lot of people was hitting me up like, hey, you know, we want to come visit you, we want to come check yeah. on you. You know, I like, like, I didn't see the message, not because I didn't want to talk to them, yep. but because I was able to show, for, show myself to them, yeah. you know, and let them see that I was in a chair. Yeah, trust me, I understand, man. I was, again, I was the same exact way. People would hit me up, girls would hit me up. They'd be like, hey, we want to come see you. I Like, look, I wouldn't even respond back. I wouldn't even respond back. Uh, two of my friends, I was blowing off until... They just took it upon themselves to pull up on me. You know? Yeah. They were just like, look, man, enough of this bullshit, bro. I'm pulling up on you. They pulled up in my parents' house and, man, it's, yeah, man. Look, look, we still friends to this day. All of us. So, yeah. so yeah, man. You, yeah, my, my, baby, my baby mama got me out of that. You know, and my mom, my brother, yeah. sister, they like, you know what, boy? Get your butt up out this house. You know what I'm saying? You got to go outside. Come on, we going to Walmart. Or we got to go to the store. <laughs> Hell yeah, like, yeah. No, I don't want to go. Hell like, yeah. man, come on, you know. So they, they kind of, you know, they mm-hmm. got me to where I am now, you know. And then mm-hmm. victim of a crime, me getting shot, uh, victim of a crime, they they uh, approved me uh, 74000 to get just um, disability stuff, like stuff that I need. They, they pay for an yeah. uh, accessible, accessible band for me and my family, like, you know, it has the built in, it has the ramp and oh, you know, okay. seatbelts and you know, stuff like that. Uh they got okay. a wheelchair. So that's where that fun, you know, goes towards, you know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, once I got out and about, you know, it was I was enjoying, you know, I enjoyed Okay. Playing. Okay, were you driving? Uh yeah, here and there. Okay, would you drive in a van or would you drive in a different car? In a different car. Okay, now was you using, was you using like portable hand controls or, or or was you using like permanent hand controls? Uh, portable ones like portable, you know, Okay. Uh, you could attach them and detach them. What's like the process of you was, getting your supplies? It was difficult. Uh, so we'll have to call all type of like mm. companies and you know they have to go through right. my insurance and stuff okay. like that. So we end up getting uh, I end up getting approved through some type of how is. They, they sponsor my Hollister, I think it is. Okay. Um, but it, it took me about a week, uh, a week to get um, all that situated. Mm-hmm. So once I got that done, took yeah. care of about every once a week. Um, they mail me like a box of uh, the supplies, and it's mm-hmm. like a week work. I understand what it's like to have a hassle with you know getting your supplies or. You know, them not sending the right catheters out. You got to call them like, yo, y'all sent the wrong catheters out. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. trust me. I, man, look, I'm going through that right now. You feel me? I'm, I'm going through that right now. So, yeah, man. So, it's it's a struggle out here. It's a struggle out here. So, is there anything else that you would like to share? Um, that's pretty much it. You know? That's pretty much it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just, okay. You know, this was, you know, it was a... Big change for me, but you know, now I'm where I'm at. You know, I'm happy with them myself. When I get my together. That's good. You know, I'm back healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, ready to get out and just finish living life. You know, with my daughter and you know, yep. my mother and stuff like that. You know, just mm-hmm. make up for all the time I've been gone. Yeah. You know, I got my daughter. You know. Exactly. Exactly, my man. Well, look, I look. I appreciate you and your girl reaching out and allowing me to be the one that brings your story to the, you know, to the masses out there. So I appreciate it. There's a lot that people can get from this interview. And, hey, look, keep your head up, all right? You got this. Okay. Never stop fighting, all right? You too, and I, and I appreciate what you're doing out there, you know? I appreciate it, my man. Thank you. For real, for real. Look, and look, I do it. I do it for people like y'all, man, because honestly, bro, it's like, I feel like that y'all that that a lot of y'all I feel like that I'm helping y'all out, this but being recorded. I feel like that most people feel like I'm helping them out, but I don't think y'all realize that y'all are helping me out, you know, because oh, yeah. I don't really get out of my comfort zone too much, you know. I don't really talk to too. I talk to people, but I'd rather just be to myself. 
But me doing these interviews is making me have to talk to people, get on the phone with people, text people, write people back. And that's not something that I really do. You know, like I'm not I'm not isolated because I do get out a lot. But when it comes to people, I'm, I'm very isolated. You know, and I, like you said, look, I go through the same stuff. Maybe this person wouldn't want to be my friend because I'm in a wheelchair or I don't want to go hang out with them because I feel like I might be a burden on them or they're going to be worried about, oh, damn, can we do this because of Kev? Or, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. So I try to kind of stay out of it. And I feel like that that's a big problem, you know, that I still face. So I understand when you say that you, you know, you face that type of problem because, you know, I go through it as well. So just know. You're not, you're not alone in a lot of the things that, you know, you deal with when it comes to being paralyzed because there's a lot of us out there that actually deal with it. And, you know, trust me, I understand. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. All right? And I just want to tell you thank you. You're welcome, man. You know, we got to stay together. And, uh, yeah. You know, we we all, you know, need each other. We can help each other out in, uh, exactly. in, in, a, special, in a special way, you know? We exactly. We got to stay strong. Exactly. You know, as for me, you know, the time where I was part of my comfort zone, you know, I end up, you know, finding you on, on YouTube and stuff like that. So I'm telling you, know, yeah. my girl, I'm like, whoa, I'm like, look at this dude. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he's driving, you know, he's living the life, whatever. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I can do it too. You so can. Basically, you, you know, you, you kind of motivated me to do better for myself, you know? I'm like, man, if he can do it, I can do it, you know? Damn, that's crazy. Man, it's it's crazy. It's crazy because I don't never really. You see me doing these interviews. I never really got to see the side of you know hearing people's testimonies of actually watching me. So it's just I just like I tell people all the time. I know we had viewers. I just didn't know people was actually watching. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm tapped in on every video. I'm like I'm telling my girl, I'm like, whoa, I'm like. You know, I'm like, dang, look, that's crazy. Look at Kevin and Casey, you know, they they doing this. You know, I'm like, hey, yeah. you know, like they really, you know, yeah, for each other and stuff like that. Like, you know, mm-hmm. she, she in a wheelchair. I'm like, you know, so I I can you know feel comfortable yeah. with myself. Yeah. So that's when I started. You know, hey, let's go out. Let's go out to eat. You know, let's 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 mm-hmm. go up to this to this pool or let's go ride jet skis and. Yeah, you know, stuff like that, living life, you know. Hell yeah, look, be careful on them jet skis, though. All right, you gotta balance yourself yeah. out. You gotta balance yourself out real good, cause I went and rode. Look, I I did a bit. I don't know if you seen a video where we was riding the boats. When we was on the boat. Uh, no, no, I didn't see that video. Okay, so. all right. Well, this was when we hit fifty thousand subscribers. We was supposed to go skydiving, but it just so happened that the clouds end up coming out. And they had to cancel the skydiving thing. So we had to do something because we was like three and a half hours out. And my family was only here for a certain time. So we went and did the boat thing. And then we did the jet ski thing. The jet ski thing was going good for about like five minutes, bro. And look, look, I'm so embarrassed by this shit. I still haven't even released the video. All right. (laughs) Like, look, that's look, yo, look, because. Cause yo, it's like I went to go play around because me and Cassandra was on a jet ski and I'm driving it, and I go to go play around and when I do that, the front like kind of like tips over and we both fall off the jet ski, and yeah, yeah man, and I can't get back on the jet ski because you know every time you go to go push down to get back up, the jet ski goes in the water. So, yeah, yeah man, so I was stuck out there, man. Like ten people had to come help me out. Man, that shit was that, man. That that bro, that shit was embarrassing, bro. That, look, that's why that's why I ain't released the video yet. <laughs> you feel me? Shit crazy. So look, just be careful on them jet skis, my man. And like I said, look, keep your head up. And I appreciate you for allowing me to interview and bring your story to the world. All right. All right, no problem, man. All right, my man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Take care. All right, peace, bro. You too.